Welcome back. This week, the Whole Health Report, sponsored by Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield, is back with Dr. Craig Hirsch, the Chief Medical Officer at Empire. We're joined by two special guests, the Reverend Dr. Bruce Rivera, President of the Bronx Multi-Faith Advisory Group, and the Bronx Borough President's Director of Health and Human Services, Dr. Nancy Keck. We will be talking about COVID vaccines today. Welcome, Dr. Hirsch, Dr. Rivera, and Dr. Keck. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Hello, Sonia. How are you? Uh, to set the stage for today's segment, um, as you know, Empire's mission is to materially and measurably improve the health of all New Yorkers. And to that end, when it comes to COVID vaccines, there's definitely inequities here in the uh, in the boroughs, and uh, the Bronx is at the low end of the um, vaccine. Uh, immunization scale right now, and they face some unique challenges in the Bronx. And what we're hoping to do today is to increase awareness, dispel myths, and help people overcome barriers so that we can increase those vaccination rates in the Bronx. And to that end, both Dr. Keck and Dr. Rivera are here to provide additional information. Thank you so much, Dr. Hirsch. And this is definitely an important topic to discuss. We thank you all for joining us. Um, I have read reports that there were issues getting the vaccine distributed equitably. Dr. Rivera, I know you helped found the Angel Brigade to improve access to the vaccine within black and brown communities in the Bronx and Washington Heights. How did that get started? Martin Luther King Jr. once stated that all forms of inequality Injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane because it often results in physical death. And in keeping with the tradition of the civil rights movement of the 1960s, we have examined and scrutinized the government's involvement in providing or not vaccine equity, particularly to our black and brown communities. So we immediately found out that the vaccine rollout was hampered by a number of key systemic deficiencies that were not fair and equitable towards the people who would need help the most. Early data had already supported the fact that certain zip codes in the South Bronx had the highest incidences of COVID infections, COVID hospitalizations, and COVID-related deaths in New York City. So you would think that the folks in these zip codes would have been targeted first. Unfortunately, the very next day of the vaccine rollout, appointments for location citywide were full and people started to complain that there were no vacancies for weeks. And true to form, the city of New York was ill prepared to address these problems immediately. So others took advantage of this disparity and many who knew how to navigate the system went to the front of the lines people who were computer savvy, people who had family members with digital access, people who did not live in the five boroughs, and people who were primarily white from the suburbs of Nassau, Suffolk, Westchester, and Rockland counties. Fort Washington Armory, under the auspices of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital had initially opened its door for vaccination without setting aside appointments for the very people who lived in Washington Heights and without a providing availability of Spanish interpreters in one of the largest Spanish speaking communities in New York City, unheard of. So the Angel Brigade was an outgrowth of the Bronx multi-faith advisory groups attempt to help close the gap by putting together a volunteer task force made up of congregants from 40 churches, eight mosques, four synagogues, one Hindi and Buddhist temple that would provide vaccine appointment assistance, transportation to vaccine locations, and language interpreters to improve vaccine access in the Bronx and in Washington Heights. I shift now to highlight how we successfully use this information to guide our efforts at lobbying our Bronx elected to unite and rally around the issue of vaccine equity and subsequently sent a letter to the governor and mayor dated February 25th, 2021, 
advocating for increased access to vaccinations on par with the FEMA New York State sites, which had been opened in Brooklyn and Queens. This served as the catalyst in increasing the number of vaccines at Yankee Stadium, particularly for the residents of the Bronx and the opening of two locations in the North Bronx and Co-op City that predominantly serves our aging uh, population. So we are happy that the Bronx elected showed a unified front to highlight the disparities that were existing in our Bronx community and how they could be corrected to the benefit of all Bronxites. Thank I you so yield the floor you. back. Thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Rivera. And Dr. Keck, there's a lot of work happening at the Bronx Borough President's Office as well. Um, can you tell us what the borough has done to address issues with access here in the Bronx? I want to thank Dr. Rivera for pointing out all the issues regarding access and the equity initiative uh, put out by the city. Uh, he proved something important in that it takes um, it takes an investment in human capital, in, in working with partners, people, community and faith-based organizations to really know what's happening in communities, where the need is, where there is the greatest digital divide and the lack of information and access. And uh, we have worked extensively with community partners as well as partners from the city to try to penetrate into those areas where there's the highest need and where um, individuals perhaps may not, were not able to access even the use of a computer or a smartphone. Mm -hmm. And our office wound up uh, developing a multi-pronged approach. We have our entire constituent affairs division and our IT division and our health and policy division that really work together to provide access, sometimes even on an individual basis where people, you know, needed help. And that a lot of the work that we did was with partners that really helped us first get out and do testing. And once the city wound up doing uh, providing data on a regular basis, we were able to really look where there were surging numbers of COVID infections mm -hmm. and to deploy mobile units to go out and test and to really promote um, leafleting, public outreach, tabling and access into communities like in, in NYCHA housing, where it was very difficult to, to access there and to get mobile units. And that is what's been happening for us. Um, all along, I think the importance is collaboration and being able to leverage donations and, and communication with those individuals, churches, and some of our most important community partners that are really invested for decades in, in both communication and trust with people on the ground. And, uh, you know, the bar president has been in every corner of the Bronx throughout the entire pandemic. And um, we've learned a lot. You know, you on the ground, you see what's really there. And we are grateful for the work that you've done, Dr. Rivera. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Keck. Um, so we have four minutes left and we do have a lot of information to catch up our viewers with. Um, but I wanted to ask about this information and misconceptions on the COVID vaccines. Um, what is the message we want to be spreading and what should our, our audience know? I think people need to get information from trusted sources, not from social media. Um, you know, there's a couple of key points. I'll be very brief. One, there are very dangerous variants of coronavirus that are circulating in the city. They spread easily and they're more damaging than ever. Vaccination equals protection. If you get in contact with a virus and you've been vaccinated, your body will fight that off and it will not spread into all of your organ systems. Unvaccinated people don't have that defense mechanism and they can not only then become ill and potentially die themselves, but also spread that to many others. Uh, importantly, people who've had COVID often have a false sense of security that they do not need to get vaccinated. Absolutely, you do. Many young people, healthy people, who've had very mild infections are now reporting long-term COVID symptoms that come and go, that affect brain, heart, lungs, uh, digestive system, sleep, and they really destroy quality of life. Those young people, here in the Bronx in particular, are the least vaccinated in the entire city between 18 and 34 year olds, we want those people to get vaccinated. That's really crucial. And you know, every Bronxite should know after one year of lived experience that we had at the beginning of the pandemic, like 900 people a day were dying. Now in the Bronx on average, it's three or four, and even that is too much. 
getting vaccinated matters. Thank you so much, Dr. Keck, for helping us break that down for our viewers. I think there's also some misinformation out there on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as well. What can you tell us about the safety and effectiveness of this shot? You know, uh, that is a, a very traditional vaccine. It's an old school vaccine that resembles that same mechanism that they used to make J&J &J and also the vaccine that I uh, took, the AstraZeneca, has been around for like 20 plus years. Um, there's a lot of attention now very to a very, very, very remote and rare possible side effect. And um, I always tell people, you know, the numbers that the CDC talks about in millions doesn't always make sense to the average citizen, a lay person. And I always say, think about if every single person in the Bronx were vaccinated with J&J, &J, mm -hmm. the possibility that any person would have a side effect, it would be one person out of mm -hmm. the entire, you know, group. And so it's such a remote and small possibility. It's mostly women who are between a certain age group. And, you know, our national leaders, the experts decided that the benefits significantly outweigh the risk because it's mm -hmm. so tiny. It really saves lives, particularly in communities that need access for homebound individuals and for people that work three jobs and or can't make it to a vaccine site that is remote and far away. Right. It really helps. Right. And Dr. Rivera, what role have you played in educating the community the way we're doing right now on this show? What I would like our viewers to understand is that faith-based institutions speak to more people on their Sabbath day than any other institution in America combined. So in essence, we have the platform to get critical public health information out in the least amount of time that is generally received by our constituency with trust, and hope beyond that which could be provided by the government and health officials. In moments such as this pandemic, the community turns to their houses of worship to be the clearinghouse of reliable information that will guide their actions on how they will proceed with dealing with COVID. Many of our clergy have led by example and have been tested and vaccinated to help bolster attitudes toward accepting the vaccination as the best path to combat this pandemic. And as you can see, I am one of them. We have opened our doors for COVID-19 testing, provided food and clothing to those who were food insecure and feeling the social effects of COVID. While some have been used as vaccine pop-up sites, the Bronx Multi-Faith Advisory Group have used our monthly meetings to educate our participants with current and critical updates regarding SARS-CoV-2 and have hosted timely workshops on how to deal with heightened disinterest and vaccine hesitancy. I turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Keck, Dr. Rivera, and Dr. Hirsch for your time today. I wish we had more time, but we do wanna keep our viewers informed. Where can they go to find out more information and get help? So there are a couple of different places. Uh, clearly, you can go to our homepage, empireblue.com. You can uh, go to the Vaccine Command Center, or you can call the COVID-19 hotline. Uh, the numbers uh, are on the page right here in front of you. Thank you so much again, um, Dr. Hirsch, Dr. Keck, and Dr. Rivera. We need like a forum of some sort so that we can talk a little more in depth about these important topics. But thank you. Thank you. Thank that, you, was, that was again an important discussion to have dr hirsch we look forward to having you back soon with the whole health report from empire blue cross blue shield we are taking a quick break here on open bxrx tuesday we will be right back